Hello and welcome to our first module in our course on management accounting. This is an unusual module. Most chapters or modules that we look at, we're going to be crunching a lot of numbers. We're going to have our calculators out, we're going to be uh, preparing tables and preparing uh, financial reports to, to help uh, managers make decisions. In this module, not a number to be crunched. And so for that reason, it's a bit of an oddball module because in most modules, again, I get to the end and I say, okay, you know, on the test, you're gonna be crunching these types of numbers. This, this chapter, this module, it's just all qualitative data. And so when I think about test questions, I think about like written answer type questions. I'm going to give you uh, uh, five points to consider, and these are typical of most intro to management accounting textbooks. I think it, it would work uh, pretty universally, certainly for students in my class. These are, are topics that are, are definitely uh, fair game and core to the chapter. So the first concept we're going to cover, and we'll cover it later on in this video, is just to define management accounting. And uh, to do it, we'll discuss management a little bit as well. Uh, two, we're going to contrast management and financial. Oh, accounting. Sorry, it looks like financial. Financial accounting. Uh, the third thing we're going to do is look at globalization and how globalization affects uh, business and affects the need for accounting. Fourth, we're gonna look at just some of the major themes of the topic, management accounting or managerial accounting. I'll use the terms management accounting, managerial accounting almost interchangeably here. And fifth and possibly most important, we'll discuss ethics and accounting. So those are typical classes of a first chapter. But again, I, I want to caution you that chapter one is atypical of what we're going to find in an intro to management accounting class, as you will soon see. Uh, but why don't we start off by just tackling that first, uh, that first item. Sorry, I'm trying to change my pen here. Let's define management accounting. So when we think about management accounting, we think of it as the information systems that provide information for managers to make decisions for a company. In other words, those planning documents or, or a company's trying to decide between one or two options. Maybe they can build a building or they can lease a building and they're trying to decide, should we build, should we lease? Well, management accounting provides you the financial data to make that decision. It doesn't provide you all of the qualitative data. Management accountants absolutely have to figure out the qualitative data, but the accounting data behind decision making is what management accounting is all about. So, uh, it's sort of taking on both parts one and two here, contrasting management and financial accounting, there are some fundamental differences between the two. And I think understanding financial accounting will help us to understand management accounting. So let me just scroll down a little bit and let's take a bit of time and consider financial versus managerial accounting. So uh, if we think about the purpose of financial accounting, well, again, we've said the purpose of managerial accounting. The purpose of managerial accounting is to help decision makers within companies make good decisions, right? It's using financial data to help make good company decisions. Uh, when I think about financial accounting, it's not helping people make decisions for a company. Financial accounting is all about make, helping people make decisions about a company. Financial accounting is all about outsiders making decisions. Managerial accounting is all about insiders making decisions. So I'll we'll start there with our users. Financial accounting is all about outsiders. Managerial accounting is all about, oof, actually I have an eraser tool here. 
insiders. So what do I mean by that? Well, if I um, am interested in investing in a company, I look at their income statement, their balance sheet, their statement of changes in shareholders' equity. I make my decisions based on those financial statements and other news reports and financial reports about what I think is going to happen with that company. But I'm an outsider of the company, and all of those documents I'm using are financial accounting documents. So outsiders are people like investors or potential investors, people like bankers who are thinking about lending a company money. You know, the company comes, they say, hey, we want a loan. The, the bankers have to decide, is this company credit worthy or not? How do they do it? They use financial accounting information. Uh, people like, well, I've said investors and bankers, shareholders as well would fall under that, but also a big one, big constituency here would be the government. The government is very interested in companies and how they're performing because the government wants to tax them. So they're an outsider who's interested in taxation. So those are probably the, our three biggest categories of financial accounting information users. Investment analysts would fall under that, that banner as well. Managerial accounting, it's provided for insiders. So people like, well, managers and employees of a company. And when I say managers, I mean from middle management all the way up to the tippity top CEO, CFO uh, types of people. And again, outsiders are making decisions about a company. Investors, should they invest or not? Bankers, should they lend or not? Government, how much should they be collecting in taxes? Those are all decisions about a company. Managers are making decisions for the company. They're saying, hey, should we expand to a new city? Should we... Uh, uh, expand to a new product line are we you know for a retailer are we putting should our socks be in front of the underwear or should our underwear be in front of the socks in terms of where we put them in the store well there's a lot of other information that will go into making those decisions but one piece of it will be accounting data and that's where managerial accounting data come into play so as a consequence of this the, the type of information provided to these users is different. So outsiders receive big picture or consolidated financial data. I'll use the word consolidated. So if I'm uh, thinking about investing in Walmart, right? I think, okay, I'm interested in buying shares in Walmart. Maybe I'm debating Walmart or should I invest in Target? Those are two giant American retailers, Walmart being uh, the bigger of the two. So I'm debating, should I invest in Walmart or should I invest in Target? Well, uh, what I'm going to look at is their financial statements. And what I get is a consolidated picture. I don't get individual Walmart location financial data. I get Walmart corporate financial data, which is all of their locations compiled into one financial statement, uh, sort of for the massive corporation. And same for Target. Uh, however, let's say I'm a manager at Walmart and I'm, I'm located in Kamloops right now. If I get, uh, uh, if I want to make a decision for Walmart Kamloops, and let's say even further, let's say I'm in charge of their electronics section. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, where on the shelf should I be putting uh, certain brands of headphones? And I find that the, uh, the Beats by Dre headphones are selling more than the Skull Candy headphones. And I think, hmm, should I be putting the Beats by Dre in a more prominent position and maybe the Skull Candy in a less uh, prominent shelf space? Or maybe I should put in, you know, Beats by Dre. People are going to go to find no matter where I put it. I can put it somewhere else and I can put the worst selling brands up front because the Beats ones are going to sell no matter what. Uh, no matter where I put them. Well, how would I choose to make that decision? If I looked at Walmart's consolidated financial statements, I would have no idea. I would need to look at Walmart Kamloops' financial statements. And in fact, I would need to look at just my electronics department's financial statements and just the headphones. I'd want to know literally just how the headphones are selling. So one month I put Beats at the front, Skull Candy at the back. The next month I try Skull Candy at the front, Beats at the back. And I'd compare the two and I'd say, oh, which one worked for my company? Which one made more sense? Well, I'm definitely using accounting data here, right? I mean, probably I have designers and, and uh, 
you know, people that, that measure things and, and look at human movement. But on one level, I'm going to look at what just frankly sold better. And that's accounting data to help me make a decision. But it's not consolidated. It's very much segmented accounting data. I can get accounting data on a micro, 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 micro level to help me make decisions for my company. Um, okay, continuing. Uh, uh, timeliness, maybe timelines. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say there. The timeliness or the timelines of, of uh, <laughs> both makes sense. I know I've written timeliness uh, of the data in terms of financial versus managerial is very important as well. Uh, financial data is almost exclusively backwards looking. What do I mean when I say backwards looking? I mean, uh, when I look at a financial report, I'm looking back at last quarter, last year. Uh, you know, if you want to look up Walmart's most recent annual report today, uh, you know, it's, I'm getting to the end of 2014. Probably their most recent fiscal year will be several months ago, if not, you know, uh, many, many months ago, uh, depending on their, their financial year ends. Annual reports, by their very nature, are historical in nature. Managerial accounting can look in all directions. They can look backwards, they can look current, and they can look even into the future. They're planning documents, so they're, they're budgeting documents. So past, present, and future. And really past and future are, are the two keys there. Um, so, of course, you know, if I want to know what sold better, Beats by Dre or Skull Candy, I'll look at the past results, but only on a segmented level. But also, a lot of management accounting is about planning for the future. It's about saying, okay, we predict this will happen. You know, if we lease that building rather than buying that building, here's what we think will happen. If then, if we do this, then this will happen. And it's all to do with strategy and, and breaking down decisions. Um, so, Management accounting can be based in the past, present, or future. Uh, the final item I'll, I'll run us through here is just rules. Uh, there are very strict rules around financial accounting, and I hope you understand why. Look at those users. Investors, bankers, government are all relying on financial accounting data. And so as a consequence, the rules are quite strict. I mean, there's still a lot of gray area within the rules, but companies have to follow IFRS, International Financial Reporting Standards, or GAAP, more broadly, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. There are rules to be followed with financial accounting. And you can imagine, if people aren't following the same rules, so if I'm an investor, I'm looking at investing in Target, I'm looking at investing in Walmart, and I want to look at their income statements, right? The income statements are, show the revenues and expenses, and they say how much profit the company has made, and that's important to me. I want to know that they're a very profitable company I'm investing in. So I look at their revenues and expenses, and all of a sudden I learn, well, wait. Target and Walmart are playing by totally different rules. Well, if that were the case, they wouldn't be comparable. But the rules are important. Or if I learned, look, Target was just making up numbers. They weren't playing by any rules. That's crazy, and that's problematic. So that's why financial accounting, especially for any publicly listed company, but financial accounting in general, there are rules and guidelines around how accounting has to happen. Managerial accounting, not strict. It's not regulated. There's no rules. And, and by the way, going back to financial accounting, every company must do financial accounting. You might say, well, what if I'm not publicly traded? I have no investors to worry about. What if I have no debt? I have no bankers to worry about. Well, you still have the government to worry about. So the government makes sure that you do some financial accounting no matter what. Even if you don't want to, thou must do manager or financial accounting. But there's no rule. Uh, no sticks? What did I say here? Not strict. Oh, my, my handwriting is just, wow, is it bad. Um, it looks like non-stick almost. Uh, so yeah, there, there's no rule that says one must do managerial accounting. Uh, managerial accounting is about bettering your company. I hit the microphone. It's about 
uh, improving your company's financial performance. And there's no rule that says, hey, you have to make a budget. Hey, you have to spend money wisely. Hey, you have to, you know, compare how your Beats headphones are selling compared to your Skull Candy headphones and decide which one to put in the front and which one to put in the back. Nobody says you have to do that, but you should. And this class focuses on some of those benefits of why you should and, and some of the technique of how to do it. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to just continue down our list of things that this course will cover. So we've looked at the first two. In the next video, we'll continue down the list.